friction. It's good for rock climbing and opening jars, but in the world of app development, it's a force that we seek to minimize. App installation is a major source of friction. Even for small apps, the installation screen can lose you 5 to 10% of your users, and the numbers just get worse as the app size gets larger. For example, 20% of app installs over 100 megabytes are canceled by the user. This is where Android Instant Apps really shines. Instant Apps are native Android apps that require no installation. But what the heck does that actually mean? Let's go ahead and take a look. Here I've got a link from a friend about the Google Trips app. I press it and I'm immediately taken into an Instant App experience. It feels like a native app because it is one. Instant Apps can be associated with any URL that you own. So you can associate an Instant App with a search result, a tweet, a text message, or a try now button on your Play Store listing. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you'd actually go about structuring your app to be instant. You're most likely used to having a single app module like this. When you compile your app, it becomes an APK that you then upload to Google Play. As you add different features and assets to your app, that APK size is going to grow. Eventually, your single app module is going to take minutes to download. Now, you haven't really taken the friction out of the app experience if your users will spend the same amount of time staring at that instant app splash screen that they would have spent looking at the installing screen. So instant apps enable you to keep all of the features that your users love, but download them one at a time. To do this, you need to take that one big app module and split it into smaller modules called feature modules. Each feature module contains the code and resources for a different, distinct thing that your users can do with your app. So for example, let's say that I have a travel app. I might have a different feature module for the code for renting hotel rooms, booking flights, and rating those hotel rooms. Now usually, these feature modules won't have completely independent code and resources. You probably use the same themes and utility code in each. You also probably use the support library in all of the feature modules. All of this shared code and resources is therefore extracted out into another module, which is called the base feature module. When your user opens your app, they don't download the whole app. They only download the code for the base feature module and the feature module that they're currently using. This means that if your user is booking a hotel room, they're not necessarily going to download the code for flights or rating. If your user then navigates to another feature of yours, the base feature isn't re-downloaded. And because you've modularized your code, you can use the same code base for your installable app as your instant app. Now behind the scenes, when you compile as an installable app, these different feature modules will act like a collection of Android libraries. But when you're there compiled as an instant app, you're going to get a zip file, which you then upload to Google Play. This zip file contains separate APKs for each feature module. At runtime, these APKs are loaded and composited together to provide the Instant Apps experience. Android Studio 3.0 has been designed with tools to help you modularize and create Instant Apps. It includes a refactoring tool for splitting code into modules. The App Links Assistant makes it easy to generate the code needed to associate the URLs that you own with your Instant App feature modules. There's also an Instant Apps SDK with NDK support and APIs for showing install prompts. The Cookie API makes it easy to transfer data from the Instant App to the installable app. And Configuration APK support helps you reduce module size. More details on all of this are in the docs link below. The 3.0 Android Gradle plugin was built with multi-module apps in mind, and it compiles multi-module projects fast. This table shows speeds for a project with 130 modules. Finally, there are two new plugin types specifically for building Instant Apps the feature plugin for your feature modules, and the instant app plugin. OK, so as we saw before, you have modules for all of your features and the base feature module. You're also going to include two additional modules just for building the app. The installable app module, which builds your installable app, and the instant app module, which builds your instant app. The installable app module uses the Gradle application plugin, but the instant app module uses the new Gradle instant app plugin. Your feature modules then use the new feature plugin. The feature plugin is kind of cool because it will make either an APK versus a library depending on whether it's being built by the instant app or the installable app module. Now, after using the correct Gradle plugins for each of your build files, you just have to set up the dependencies between the modules. Then you're ready to build both instant and installable apps. For some hands-on experience converting a regular app to an instant app, check out the Android Instant Apps Code Lab. Now, if you are itching to convert your own app, we also have tons of documentation and resources about the requirements and processes for getting started. And if you ever find yourself stuck, you can reach out on Stack Overflow with the Android Instant Apps tag. That's it for today. Happy building.